There's another built-in flaw in this bill, and it goes to the parent or legislation, the Offshore Petroleum and Greenhouse Gas Storage Act of 2006, OPGGS for short. This act supports the notion that the right place for carbon dioxide is buried underground instead of providing life-affirming food for a natural environment. Are we going nuts in this place? This is absolutely insane. According to NASA, carbon dioxide production by humans is fertilising the earth. I'll debunk that in a minute, but I want to show you the power of carbon dioxide and its significance. NASA, quote, has found a quarter to a half of the Earth's vegetated lands has shown significant greening over the last 35 years due largely to rising levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. And CSIRO has found the same. But note, they say due to rising atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide. They didn't say human production. Because we cannot, comp we cannot claim that carbon dioxide, including that from burning oil and gas and coal, is making crops grow faster and stronger, improving yields of food and fibre that feed and clothe the world, because humans, human carbon dioxide does not and cannot increase the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. And I'll explain why. The Earth's atmosphere contains a certain amount of carbon dioxide. The Earth's oceans contain 50 to 70 times more carbon dioxide in dissolved form than in the entire atmosphere. The United Nations so-called Climate Agency admits this. The data shows that as the carbon dioxide, as water temperature rises, the solubility of carbon dioxide in water decreases and the oceans liberate carbon dioxide and we get a rise in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When the oceans cool due to that big ball in the sky that you see in the sun, you see in the day, the sun, the oceans cool. It increases the solubility of carbon dioxide in, in the oceans, and that takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Nature itself produces an estimated 32 times more carbon dioxide every year than the entire production from humans. Entire production from humans. So what that means is that nature overwhelmingly dominates the level of carbon dioxide production, and in addition, the oceans control that level according to the temperature of the oceans. And there are many other factors to do with uh, the vegetation in the oceans, the vegetation on, on uh, the earth, uh, on the land as well. So let me just give you a few more facts, because this is an absolutely ridiculous proposition to bury life-giving carbon dioxide in the ground, and worse, to do it at enormous cost. Firstly, let's get the term correct. The Labor Party and the Greens keep referring to carbon dioxide, essential for all life on Earth, as carbon pollution. Well, I'll ask you all to think about the term pollution in a minute. Carbon dioxide is a gas, colourless, tasteless, odourless, invisible. It is called a trace gas because the scientific community recognises that there's bugger all of it. There is 0.04 per cent in the atmosphere. That's four one hundredths of one per cent. There's virtually nothing there. And yet it is essential for life on this planet. Because every one of us in this chamber, every human, every living organism, contains in every single cell in our bodies the element carbon. Now, carbon is not very special in the universe. It's not very, it's not very uh, common in the universe. But the beauty of Earth, the miracle on Earth, is that carbon is concentrated. That element is concentrated. And that's what makes life possible on our planet. Carbon is the source of life. Every one of us, including the senators now looking down at the ground, are, making, are, are based on carbon. It's in every cell of our bodies. When we breathe, we take in oxygen. We also combine that in our, in our lungs, and lungs and digestive systems and our blood with carbohydrates, carbon and hydrogen, elements in our food that we take in. The carbon in those elements in the food produces carbon dioxide when combined with oxygen. The hydrogen combines with the oxygen to produce 
H2O, water. So our basic chemi chemistry is that we take in carbon, we take in hydrogen, and we produce water and carbon dioxide, which is essential for all the trees on this planet. How ironic that the Greens demonise carbon pollution because carbon dioxide, nature's trace element, trace gas, essential for all life on the earth, is essential for everything green we see on this planet, in the oceans and on the, and in, in the land. So carbon dioxide is essential for life. The level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is minuscule. The level of carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere is not affected by human impact because of the oceans. If humans produce slightly more, or incredibly more, then the oceans release slightly less. If the, if the humans produce less carbon dioxide, then the, um, then the oceans release more. And we see that in the fact that after the global financial crisis in 2008, the world went into a recession. Most countries went into a recession. There was globally a recession. The level of energy used was less in 2009. And that means we produce less carbon dioxide from humans. And yet the level in the atmosphere continued to increase. So what that means, what that means if senators stop and pause and think in serving the people of Australia, is that it doesn't matter if humans cut our carbon dioxide output because the oceans will dictate the level in the atmosphere. So Senator Stirl, talked about greenhouse gas storage and capture. It's a nonsense. It doesn't matter how much we pump into the ground and take away from the plants, it will not affect the level in the atmosphere. It will cost us, as the exp explanation I will give you later in this speech, $1.3 billion, as is the case, just for, just for one series of uh, burials for carbon dioxide from, from uh, power stations and cement plants in Norway. Every single person in this chamber right now takes in air with 0.04 per cent of carbon dioxide. And we're all breathing out 4 to 5 per cent. That is, we're increasing the carbon dioxide levels in our air by 100 times or more. You, according to the Greens, senators, are all carbon polluters. Order. Senator Robert, the time being.